A simple feature object contains both a geometry and attributes associated with that geometry. In this section of the tutorial, we're going to talk about the different geometry objects that you can use with a simple feature. So the two primary simple feature geometry objects that people or that data scientists typically use are a point geometry and a polygon geometry. A point is simply some point in space. It's created with the st underscore point function in the SF package and a polygon is a geometry with a sequence of points that form a closed ring. So think about a set of points that make a circle or some shape that doesn't overlap itself. And multiple rings form outer rings and holes within the polygon. So you can actually have a polygon that has an exterior and then little holes inside of that. So in this code below, we're going to go through the process of creating a couple of points and then plotting them as well as creating a polygon object. So in this source code right here, we're using the st underscore point function to create a point at the positions one, two. There's only two coordinates here, so this is an xy point. And if we wanted to create a, a xyz point, uh, we can also use the, we can once again use the st underscore point function and we give it three values instead of just two. And so this is an xyz object. If we plot those points, uh, we actually would get the exact same plot in two-dimensional space because you cannot see the third dimension in two-dimensional space. And you can't really learn a whole lot from this plot, to be honest. There's no axes or anything like that. But this is a single point drawn at the position uh, 1, 2 in the x space and the y space. To create a polygon object, we need to create at least an outer ring and possibly some other rings that specify holes. This notation might be a little unclear right here. But the essentially what's going on right here is we're creating a ring that starts at the point zero, zero, and then moves around in a clockwise fashion to create this square. And so this is the outer ring of the polygon. So we have the point zero, zero, 10, zero, 10, 10, and 10, zero, and then back to zero, zero. And so we create this matrix that uh, is used to define that outer ring. And then we have two holes which are these other little squares that are inside of the outer ring. So we have a ring here, we have the outer ring, we have the two whole rings here, and we put them into a list that contains all of the rings. And then to create a polygon, we use the st underscore polygon function to convert those, those point rings into a polygon. And so this is a polygon right here that has two holes here and here. And so this is the plot of the polygon that we've just created. There are five other common geometry objects that people use in practice. The first one that we'll talk about is the line string geometry, which is created using the st underscore line string function. And this is just a sequence of points that is connected with a straight, non self intersecting lines. Uh, and so basically the lines, they're just straight lines that connect the dots. A multi point object is, is simply a set of points. The object is actually a collection of points. Multi polygon is a set of polygons. The multi line string geometry is just a set of line strings. Those are created using the st underscore multi point, st underscore multi polygon, and st underscore multi, multi point functions. And just to emphasize this, it's literally just whatever you would use to create a line string or a point or a polygon, you have more than one of those and you put them into these different functions here. Then we also have a we also have a geometry collection object, which is literally a set of the other geometries. So a geometry collection cannot contain a geometry collection object, but it can contain, it can contain any of the other geometries. So we're going, I'm going to provide some examples of plotting, uh, creating and plotting these different geometries. So I'm going to create a uh, matrix here of just normal points or well, 10 points coming from a standard normal distribution. I put them in this matrix here. Each row is going to refer to a different point. And I'm going to use that matrix of points to first create a line string using the st underscore line string function. So you can see this is what it looks like when it's created. And if we plot it, this is the plot that we get. And so uh, it looks like we start up here. And then the second point is down here. The third point is down here, fourth point uh, down here. And then the fifth point is over here. So we have our line string uh, plotted now. To create a multi-point object, uh, we can actually take that same points matrix and put it in the st underscore multi-point multi function 
each one, each row, the, each row here is going to be a different point. So we create our multi-point object and we applied it and we get the five points that we provided to that function. And it looks a lot like this. We're just not connecting the points with lines. To create uh, multi polygons here, I take the original polygon that we previously showed. I do another polygon here, which is just the outer polygon, and I'm shifting it by 24 units in both the horizontal direction and the vertical direction. I put those together into another list. So it's a list of lists really here. And then I put that in the st underscore multi polygon function here to create my multi polygon. And we get what we have shown here. And so we have the original polygon plus the outer ring here that's been shifted by 24 units. To get my multi-line string, ob multi string object, I am creating another set of points here, just three different points. Each row of this matrix is a different point. And then I use the list function to join the original set of points with the second matrix of points. And I use that to create a multi-line string, ob multi string object. And so we can see the first line string object here, and we see the second line string object here. It almost falls into a straight line, the second and third points there. And then to create a geometry collection, I can combine all kind, really all the different kinds of objects we've already looked at here. I am simply going to uh, get the first point, the first polygon, and then the first line string that we looked at. I'm going to put those in a list you put those in the st underscore geometry collection function to create a geometry collection object. And I plot it here. And this one's a little tougher to see simply because uh, when you have this geometry collection, for some reason, it fills this polygon here. And it actually covers the, the point that we would otherwise see. But you can actually still see the line string object down here. And the point object is just somewhere underneath uh, the gray section here. So you may ask yourself, well, how do I know what type of geometry I need? And the reality is that uh, most of the time you're not gonna have to worry about this. Often this is going to be automatically determined when you read in shape files that describe the spatial structure you're trying to display. So for example, you might have be reading in a shape file related to counties in the United States, in which case the shape is going to be automatically determined. Uh, if you have attributes observed at a single location, that's probably just going to be a point. If you have a region, oftentimes those can be represented by a polygon. Complicated objects made up of regions, for example, an island chain like Hawaii, might require multi-polygons. The other geometry types that we have talked about can be used for more complicated objects that you might imagine. There actually are 10 other rare geometry, geometry types that we haven't really discussed and we're not going to discuss. They are circular string, curve, surface, triangle, compound curve, curve polygon, multi-curve, multi-surface, polyhedral surface, and 10, which is a triangle network of some type. And you can learn about them through the additional resources provided at the end of this document if you're really interested. Uh, these are not used nearly as frequently. They, they, of course, they, they are, people are finding more and more uses for them, but they're not nearly as common as the seven previous ones that we've mentioned. Another thing I want to do, I want to point out with respect to the geometry objects is the coordinate reference system. So a coordinate reference system or CRS must be provided in order to place a point on the Earth's surface. If you don't specify a coordinate reference system, then the SF package is going to assume that you're talking about objects in Euclidean space, which is okay. But if you actually do have observations on the Earth in some place, somewhere, you really want to specify a coordinate reference system. When you import a geometry object from file or a simple feature object from file, the CRS will often be provided automatically, so you don't need to worry about it. The most common one I typically see is the WGS84 coordinate reference system, reference system though there are many other popular ones that you might observe. Uh, sometimes in order to combine geometry objects, you must specify the CRS of a geometry object or convert an object from one CRS to a different CRS and then merge them together, that kind of thing. So CRSs are really important if you're doing really complex analysis, uh, complex analysis with spatial data. This tutorial is not going to be adequate for doing that. Uh, there are so many different coordinate reference system, coordinate reference systems. And uh, a coordinate reference system is usually chosen because it has some desirable properties. So people actually construct these coordinate refer reference systems to have a certain property when applied to a set of points. 
discussing these coordinate reference systems is really beyond the scope of this short tutorial. And if you do need to know about coordinates reference systems, what you need to know is probably so specific that this tutorial couldn't help you anyway. So uh, if you want to learn more about coordinates reference systems, there are a couple of uh, links here from QGIS. I guess you can just see that down in the lower left corner of the screen there or introduction to coordinate reference systems at the link here. And both of those go into a lot more detail about coordinate, coordinate reference systems than we, than is really appropriate for this tutorial.